Hi everyone, my name is Keith and I'm a volunteer at the Burwood Public Library. Today I'm going to talk to you about the latest book I've read called 18 Below by Stephen Anham. Now I hope I pronounced that right because he's a Swedish gentleman and I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. Um, I'm going to go off first say, loved this book. Excellent. If you like mysteries, this is a good book for you. Now, this is what they call a Scandinavian thriller or a Scandinavian noir book, and it comes under the same kind of genre as uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tag 2, written by Stieg Larsson. If you like his books, then you will really like this. Now, Stefan Anham has written several books, and this is the, the, uh, the hero in this, I guess you want to call it, uh, is a Fabian Risk, and this is a Fabian Risk thriller. Now, this is the third in the series of the Fabian Risk thrillers. Um, I was skeptical at first, but then looking it up, you can actually read this in its own separate entity, and it doesn't really make any difference if uh, you had read his other previous two books, which happen to be, in order, uh, Victim Without a Face and The Ninth Grave both by the same Fabian Risk, who happens to be, works in a criminal investigation agency in Sweden with the police. Doesn't make a difference if you've read those two. I found as I read along in this book that um, there is some throwback to the previous stories and some of his relationships, like with his family, uh, some of his co-workers. Um, they talk about things that happened in passing, and it doesn't really you know, cause you to lose track of what the main story is. It might have been nice if I'd have known some of this earlier, and I probably will, because I really did enjoy this book, go back and read the other ones, just because I enjoyed the way this person wrote, and it was a great thriller. I mean, I love The Girl with the Trek and Tattoo series, and this falls into the same kind of category. Um, the only difficult part about this and as I did with the other Scandinavian noir sort of book, is that because it was translated from Swedish, it, that's fine, but the places and the place names, it's like I can't pronounce. The street names, uh, and there's a lot of that because they're on police chases and investigations, and they're going to different areas where you and I would say we went to the mall on South Street. They're on Stiekenschloss Road, and uh, all these names that you can't even pronounce, so you sort of just like, yeah, okay doesn't make any difference to the story. You get used to it after a while. At first, it's daunting. The words are that long, and you can't even begin to pronounce them, but it doesn't really make a difference on what street you're on. You still get the point of the story. Basically, uh, the story takes place involving a police chase at the beginning where a car goes, the car they're chasing goes over the brink of a uh, of a wall in town and get in sinks and they think it's an attempted suicide. Uh, they were chasing this man and uh, they dig him out of the water uh, later only to find that the person's been dead for two months before he even went in the water and he was frozen. Hence the name 18 below zero, meaning he was 18 below zero when he was frozen. Well, strange thing is people saw him driving the car. He was alive when he hit the water. Uh, people have pictures of him in town going to the bank uh, days before this. So how could he have been dead two months prior and still be roaming around town being himself, doing things, uh, meeting people? Mm, interesting. So the story gets involved from that point. How could this happen? Then we have some other murders taking place, and the story gets thicker because some, there's some similarities between the stories. I love the way it was written. They're short chapters. They're like maybe five to six page chapters, which makes it read quick. You can stop in different places without having to read a four mile long chapter. So that was good. Um, lots of chapters, obviously, but it's still a fast read and wants you to keep reading because it's like, oh, now what? There was a side story involved, not just the main murder investigation. Um, there was a side story that took place in Denmark, which caused me to say, well, okay, wait a minute, we're talking about Sweden, I don't know where this town is, or this city they're talking about, and now we're in Denmark, but yet they can talk to each other, so I went to Google Maps and looked it up, because I don't know anything about that part of the world. Wow, 
They're right next door to each other. You can take a ferry. It literally takes an hour to go from where this story takes place to Copenhagen in in uh, Denmark. The story takes place in Sweden, but they go to Denmark sometimes to talk to other people and colleagues, and the other part of the story takes place in Denmark. So we go back and forth between both countries. Like I said, interesting to actually look at a map and see the names of the cities they're talking about, because then you're going, okay, now that makes some sense. I kind of know what this is. And they talk about areas in the country where something happened, and you can actually see what they're talking about. It's not that big, so it isn't like uh, driving across country here. It's an hour from one spot to the other, from one country to the next. So that kind of helped to look if you're not really sure about Denmark or Sweden like I wasn't. But like I said, there's a second story going involved in a different part of the country, another country, um, but yet they get intertwined later on, and you get to know a lot about the interaction between the different investigators. Fabian Risk is not the lead investigator in this uh, criminal division that he works for. He's just one of the one of the regular people with among five or six other ones who you learn all their interrelationships. There's trouble with the boss. Uh, she has some alcohol issues. And it kind of goes into different topics about that. You learn more about the stories of the individual people, which makes you want to read it even more. So all in all, it was great. And at the end, when you get all finished and the crime gets solved finally, which is very surprising uh, how this actually got pulled off and what actually happened in the middle of all this and how they figured it out. Um, there's a little twist at the end, which sort of can lead you into, oh, possibly another Fabian Risk book, because it kind of leaves you hanging on a different part of the story. Another new twist at the end in the epilogue, like three or four pages of just a little teaser. So I can really recommend this if you like a mystery book. And if you'd liked, like I said, The Girl and the Dragon Tattoo and those stories, you'll like this. Um, very good mystery. Uh, fast-paced. Like I said, you can get over the Swedish words and stuff because you can figure it out. Doesn't And that doesn't detract from the story. It reads very fine, very smooth. Excellent book. Um, so if you get a chance, uh, once again, it's called 18 Below by Stefan Anheim. And, uh, or the other books, if you can get those someplace too. Um, maybe you'd like to read the first one first. Not necessary. Excellent story on its own. Doesn't detract at all. So, like I said, I would give it a five star in my book review, and I enjoyed it and for looking for some more. So I hope you get it sometime and you enjoy it too. Okay, have a great day. Thanks for listening.